he's not even taught the drums till I walked through your exactly. Team. Right. However, what I do is I ask every person that comes on, how did we meet? Do you remember how we met? We met in number two Baker Street. Yep. Walked in with my mate. A few years ago. Do oh, I three, four? After lockdown it would It was after oh, lockdown, yeah. it was so after maybe lockdown. About Three years ago. So maybe three years ago then I walked in and you were playing and your mum and your sister yep. were sitting and we ended up sitting beside we were sitting beside them. Did they know that that was So I'm, I'm your playing mom? I'm playing and you're getting steaming with my family. Aye, very much, that's the <laughs> way it went. It was quite good actually. I'm sure it was white wine they were both drinking actually large glasses. Yeah. Or maybe probably. maybe your mum was driving. No, because I was I think it was me that was running them back. Oh, I had you, to ask oh you've got it all wrong then, mate. You need to get your mum, you need to get somebody else, right? Because I had to you. stay. Ah. Uh, if right. you remember, I did Oh, I can't, I can't remember the end of it, mate. Right. <laughs> but, but that's where we met. You know what? I don't know if you know this. Unofficially, we met five years ago. Right. Go for it. I was the best man at my pal's wedding. Oh. And, and his wedding band was Sneaky Trico. Where was this? This was at the, the Glen Bervy. Aye. Glenbury House yep. Hotel. Yep. Ah, right. And, uh, and who, was, who was the groom? Or the Neil, right, right, um, Neil Cassells. Right, so and Neil Cassells. Kirsten. Well, I can't remember her, her maiden name. Ah, but she was Neil, Neil and Kirsten. Ah. And, uh, and you were actually the, the wedding ah, band. Ah, right. You've maybe told me this before. Aye. So, uh, unofficially, Aye. because I, actually, I always like. And just go up at the end of it. Listen, guys, you did a great job. Aye. I can't remember if it was yourself, it was probably maybe your singer and bass player guitar or something, but he's obviously done a good job. But I unofficially I, kind I, of met five years, years ago. Five years ago, wow, that would have been. And, uh, I think it would have been, I think it was before lockdown. Right. right, maybe just before. Aye, lockdown. well, that would work about, about right. Something aye, like it would that. then. But we see so many people. But um, aye, I don't remember because everything will probably just blend into it one. It pretty much does. And as soon as we finish, like we're one of the, well, maybe no one of the rare bands, but as soon as we finish, start shutting the gear. Yep. There's nothing that's stopping having a beer or doing anything. It's so you've not made it that much that you've not got your roadies. No, no yet, mate. Nah, no yet. <laughs> one day though, because one day, day well, see back in the olden days when you always had a pal that would take thirty quid. To drive the band there, to help you strip the gear of this. See, right. if you ask somebody, uh, 300. Okay, it's, it's, know, it's not worth it. To make money now. No, it's, it's not worth it. it. Right, so, we know how we met. Aye. Right? Where are you from? Where did you grow up? Original, well, oh, I was born over in Hillfoots. Right. So, I grew up in Alawa and then moved to Tillicutri. Tillicutri is actually where I sort of a first got an ear for music. Um, simply due to the guy that stayed downstairs from us, um, he was a massive country western fan. Playing music too loud. All the time. <laughs> all, record player. Right. Always had his, uh, he, was, he said to his parents, but always had his, his bedroom windows open. Right, okay. And it was Slim Whitman and Johnny Cash, you know, these guys. So, I was going to say, were you into music when you were wee grown up? In, really, really, in, really young. I always had a no, probably. Oh, so I would, I would be about seven, about seven year old then. So just before the war. Just before the <laughs> first world war. That's right. <laughs> just before I was sent off to fight for the country. Right, okay. <laughs> no, I it was. Um, I it, it was great. It was. Um, it was funny that. Country music became, as I've never played in a country band, but country music has always been a thing for me all the, through the years. We different, we we different friends I've made and different influences, I guess, whether it's been somebody that just listens to country music and lets me hear it, mm -hmm. or somebody that plays country music and so, lets so me hear it. your neighbours blasting out the country tunes, that's Aye. kind of what first catches your ear. That's, that's definitely it. What age do you develop your own kind of kind of taste oh so when Is I it high school like most most people well I was about I think I was about 10 or 11 because it was I was 11 when I got my first drum kit um why did you want drums and not, like you know everyone's like I want I want a guitar I want I, a bass I, what I, was it about drums I watched um I seen Adam the Ants on top of the pops and they're mm -hmm. two drummers Right, and you're just like, that's amazing. I thought that was great. I don't know, I don't know why it looked great. Right. It just Adam Nats were very drum oriented. And was, your, uh, was your parents happy to get a drum kit because being a musician, Aye. Right, not only did they cost a fortune, Aye. they take up so much space, 
Can he practice them quietly? Well, the hence the reason probably. Aye. They're few and far between. So I was only I was brought up only by my mum. Thinks I'm down right. the age. That's fine. Um, and it was my mum. She actually bought my first drum kit off one of my brothers. Friends, right. for 60 quid. Do you remember what type it was? It was a premier drum kit, but it was... Was it a standard bass drum? Bass drum, snare, bass drum toms, snare, four two toms, toms. I bet one of the mounted toms didn't match the kit. Of course. <laughs> and it's all the, all these things that if I think right. back now, when you look at the price... Uh, Hi-hat symbol. A couple whatever of things worth. Uh, vintage gear. Yeah. I should have kept the lot. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think I, I, I recovered it. I saved up money because I was I was a kid. Aye. I saved up pocket money and bought um, is it Fablon you call it the stuff that you can buy in a roll. Right, right. Mm. And I recovered the kit white and just did all that kind of. It, it got at an early age. It got my understanding the makings of drum kit as well. Like when you strip it back. So to did you just have that set up in your bedroom? Of, in my bedroom. Right. And I played it. It was it was probably it was a great. It was a. It did, did you go to lessons or was it purely sitting down I and was, figuring it out? I was self-taught and then there was a guy, an older guy, stayed along the street. Oh, and he was proper, proper old. Raymond, his name was, um, and he had heard me playing, obviously, because you're not going to know here a drum kit. Of course. <laughs> and played. So he had came and chapped the door. He knew my mum um, and he'd come in and gave me a few pointers. Uh, and stuff, but then it was at an early age. There was there was no reading music for me, so mm-hmm. it was all ear. So we see him just sitting you down, saying, "Right, I the just, position." I hand. just did that, and, he, and came and sort of set the kit up properly for me, which is amazing because right. when you first start, it's a bit like a good if you're not, guitar I, based and. You don't know anything when you first get it. No. You hold, it feels weird to even hold the thing, aye, let alone aye. Just tune it. How, this was, how the hell do you tune it? I know. You this know. was this was set up. You'd have to be octopus man to play it. Like everything was all spread out aye. to make it look big and like a big huge drum kit. Aye. But then it was all finally set up. It was just this nice, comfortable, easy to play so drum you went kit. Went from like uh, the Who, right down the Pretty games. much, aye. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, who, who were your drumming? Who? who when you were younger, who you like? I wanted to be them as a drummer. Oh, when I was when I was younger, it was for me. It was well, I started when I was in a, when I was eleven, so that was early eighties. So it would be get up, go to school, sometimes. Yeah. Come back. We radio in my bedroom with headphones on, and then I would just try and play along with the songs you could hear. Yeah. Back in the days. Um, there was less hits, there was less radio shows. Yeah. The DJs would change every two hours, but they would still play the same songs. Right. So you would have two hours of thinking time for yeah. last playing the song to when it would come back on the radio. I bet you'd probably try to tune into Top of the Pops to see what, if there's a drummer on, what are they actually doing? Oh, aye. Because that's aye. the other thing I've spoke with um previous episodes is uh, learning the guitar. Now, I'm a wee bit younger, but, but back then there was no YouTube. Mm-hmm. Hard to, it was hard to find um, a music book. Aye, and, absolutely. And if you couldn't read music, you had to hope that it had tablature down the bottom so that you mm-hmm. could figure out where am I meant to put my fingers Aye. here. But even um, music videos, it was a music video. You didn't um, you didn't see the guitarist doing much. Aye. So you see, trying to find like maybe a live concert or uh-huh. a band that you like that you just, just actually to like just to see. get a wee bit of it so you can, you're probably the same but I mean, with the I, drums I still have to do it because obviously I, I read a lot when I'm playing because yeah. it's simple for me to just download a drum score turn up and play it sight reading yep. it's easy peasy so but if, I, if you, drum scores are probably I wouldn't say the most difficult to get or to purchase yep. you can get everything for the guitar and the bass and stuff so when I listen to a song with headphones on and I sit and chart it up mm-hmm. You didn't always, because he mixes and the music, you didn't always hear all the kind of wee intricacies yeah. and all the nice wee stuff, so I will try and watch it. But then nine times out of ten, when, you t- when you've listened to a recorded version and then you watch a band on YouTube playing it live to see exactly what the drummer's doing yeah. at that point, he's not doing anything at that point. Yeah. Things are overly done for recordings. and It's amazing now, though, because see, you, can you imagine being 11 years old now? Oh, the technology, aye. the free technology aye, that aye. is out there, aye. that you can download an app, or it might even cost you like a fiver, aye. right? And you can get your favourite song, wipe out the instruments and go, right, I just want to hear the Pure, drums, uh, and the vocals, right. or the aye. drums and the bass, or aye. just the guitars, aye. and uh, I don't know how to play that. 
onto YouTube. <laughs> How do you play blah blah blah? And there's like a thousand videos of people Correct. giving you lessons. How easy is it? I know now? it is. Even when we're at gigs now, when I'm, when I'm gigging, if somebody will come up at the break or whatever and ask for a certain song, mm -hmm. maybe the singer knows it. That's I would say that's well, it's probably the most difficult part to get right. You can kind of bust the drums and if you roughly know the chords and stuff. But what I can always or normally do now is if somebody asks for a song, I can just go online at the break, find your drum score, oh. have it on my phone. And in sight readers that I'm playing, I'm playing it at a gig, which Although makes... I would imagine... I would imagine you've been doing it long enough now Aye. that I'll guarantee the majority of the requests you've played a million times already. I've, I've, Unless it's something maybe new. Aye. That's, that's the only thing that catches you. I mean, I'm a massive... For, for, for a drummer, I'm a massive dance and trance music fan. Right. Which is bizarre. It doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. So even the dance side of things, there's hardly... I try to never listen to what I'm playing every week Yeah. because I see it a bit pointless. I see when I'm driving about or if I'm at my studio or if I'm doing whatever, I try to listen to stuff that it's is different. fairly popular but I've not played it. Mm -hmm. Just so it's in there. You heard of an old uh, band from Ireland from the, I think they started in the 80s called Therapy. No. Right, they're like a rock band. Aye. Right? So they were, they were always described as like you had Nirvana. Mm-hmm. And then you had Metallica, and they were always described as the sound. Uh, their right. sound fitted in, in between, <coughs> not quite as soft as Nirvana, not quite as heavy, right? There was just it was just three of them: drummer, guitarist, bass player. Aye. The guitarist was the singer. The drummer was massively influenced. Like he, he does a lot of dance beats. Aye. Aye. They're playing rock music. Oh, aye. To him playing dance beats, but it's on rock drums. Aye. Aye. So it, it just created this. Different sounds from the, the, any the, the other band, was using, but it was brilliant to hear I, though. I'll have a listen. I'll, I'll send you some stuff. Like, I, like, I like when you have these discussions about introducing your, or somebody introducing somebody new to you. Yeah. Or a new style. There's no many new styles coming out these days. Right, enough, so, but. see, um, what bands were you getting to get into seeing you were a teenager? It was all 80s stuff. It was all Duran Duran, Hue and Cry. Um, you still like all that stuff? I, I do, it's still there. Yeah. I, um, I think sometimes see the first, the first stuff you properly discover yourself. I, I don't think it ever leaves you. No, I don't think so. But there's, there's like recently I listened to quite a lot of Mike and Mechanics. Yeah. But to me, Mike and Mechanics, regardless of how modern they have almost become, they still have that almost original sound from back in the day. Yeah. Um, so what about, see like your, your big drummers from the decade before, see like your Aye. Keith Moon and your John Bonham and all that, do you like them or did you kind of miss oh, that? I, you've, you've, or do you appreciate that maybe from a drumming point of view but it's not your thing Aye, to listen you've to? You've absolutely hit the nail on the head with that because it's amazing when people come up to me and say, oh you must be into ACDC, you must be into Led Zeppelin, you must Aye. be that, were well, you being a drummer? No, grew up through the 80s and it was all just, yep. it was 80s stuff. It's probably not all quite recent, I've got a good friend that always, he's always wanting to show me videos. Like uh, John Bonham playing and... Uh, well, you can, just, I suppose you can watch I, and appreciate it. Oh, absolutely, and I do, you know, yep. even Ginger Baker, I mean, but, uh, uh, Ringo Starr. Yeah, yeah. There's the perfect example. He's a brilliant drummer. And yeah. I'll stand in his corner of the argument about him not being well, very that, good but, and what But the argument you. is always that he played for the song, he didn't play 100%. to show off, and 100%. that's what drives me up the wall Aye. with the, with some bands. Yeah, that, that's why they implode a lot of time because you've got four or five guys desperate for the spotlight. Aye, rather than four or five guys working together to Aye. make the overall Take sound better. Right? you don't need a drum solo. No. you don't need a, gu a no. guitar solo. No. What makes a song sound better? Aye. At this point, at this point, throughout the whole thing, I was People never, don't seem to get that. It's no, crazy. no, 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 no. I was never really a. I was never really a Beatles fan. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was asked to dep with a Beatles band. We went down and played in Liverpool, right? Uh, the Cavern Club, yep. the Cavern Pub, Matthew Street Festival. Also went across to France with them. So leading up to that, I had to learn. Everybody knows Beatles songs, of course, to sing along to normally. Aye. And even if you're a drummer, because I was the, I'm always pretty focused on what I'm doing. I, didn't always listen to things I didn't need to, too busy. Um, but because I was doing this, I thought I'll need to spend a bit of time on the Beatles stuff. So mm -hmm. I've got a lot of the Beatles scores to play. But we were doing the Beatles, we were doing um, Paul McCartney. Yep. We were doing Wings as well. Yep. So what I had to learn was it was brilliant because gigging with that band, I had to be quite kind of 
limp wristed like uh, Ringo mm-hmm. and then when you're doing the Paul McCartney stuff <coughs> it's A. Blabberell Jr. Style. who plays him he's a big massive drummer yep. so you've got to kick it a bit and it was great and it wasn't until then it, which was about at least 10 years ago that's when I realised that how brilliantly technical Ringo Starr actually was because mm-hmm. if you didn't play the parts that he had written for the songs it didn't sound like the song yeah. there's a lot of songs you, a mm-hmm. drummer can just wing it and play along yeah. but when you didn't play his parts they were not the Beatles so I've seen to Barry Frame that was on before we were Aye. talking about learning the instruments and, uh, Barry's still learning though isn't he he's, he's, he's an absolute beginner no a few years time he's maybe no <laughs> he'll <bad>. be alright <laughs> right? but what I was saying to him I, that was I'm, I love the rock heavy metal stuff and some of the the technical ability Aye. of these drummers is just mind blowing right yeah every single one of them though from a rock point of view Aye. will say to a drummer starting out go and learn Phil Rudd Aye. From ACDC, the standard. Oh, aye. Right? Aye, aye. Go and master that. Because yep. if you can master that, yep. you can then progress on to learn all the fancy stuff and bits and pieces. But you need to learn the basics first. Aye. If, or you're, you're just Phil, you're Phil skipping Rudd, an important Phil Rudd lesson. has made millions of pounds playing pretty much grade two drums. Yeah. And it's perfect for the song. Any more than they but wouldn't be. It's harder than you think. Like, oh, see, 100%. If you see them playing a song like, like the Baroque, Aye. Right? It's not difficult. I, c- I'm, I used to have a drum kit. I'm not a drummer aye. though. Right? I'm a guitarist who likes to play the drums aye, sometimes. Aye, aye, aye. Right? I could play that. But see when they go into their 20 minute guitar solo, uh-huh. to keep that beat. Oh, to keep it going. Right? Aye, aye. And the other thing I'd said to Barry was if you're playing in a band, right? If you're playing the gu- if you're playing vocal, doing vocals, you can mess up a line, you can go and sing the second verse instead of aye, the first verse. Aye, aye. You, if you're playing the guitar, you can oh, play the wee bum note. Aye, or a bum aye, chord, right? aye. You can get round it, yep. you can disguise it, right? You can rely on other guys to, to, uh, to aye, kind aye. of hide it. Yep. If you muck up on the drums, you're caught. You're caught. Aye, aye, 100%. Aye, and, uh, aye, you're right in the bubble. Because I, I do hate it. I hate it when people say, like, see when people are like, drumming's just, they're just. Hitting things for a for a living. Aye. Your band is is fucked. If it was that easy, see, everybody see would be doing it. If you've got a drummer that messes up, aye. There's no disguising that. Yeah, no, there's throws, no. The, it throws, there's no. If there's four or five guys, they're all thrown. The best if thing the guitarist you mucks up, you can keep going. Aye, and that's you can get away aye, with it. Look aye. confident. Aye. The best thing about I, I suppose one thing you I always try to because also teach. So one of the things I always try to encourage is recovery. Yeah. As quick as you can. Of Forget course. about the mistake. Forget about what you've done, because if you start to panic, you'll then be thinking about the panic, you'll be thinking about the mistake. Oh. By that point, there's half a bar's passed, and then you're, you're out of sync. But just learn to recover, learn to be as quick as you can to come back in. Doing the pub gigs, if I, if I was to stop every time I made a mistake... <laughs> Play <laughs> half a song. Every song. Every aye, song. Aye, I'm like, aye, there's aye. a lot to be said for aye. confidence. Yeah. Oh, aye. Aye, aye. And, uh, and just winging it. Aye. Right, but see... You're, so you get a drum kit around the age of 11? 11, my first right. kit. So as a teenager, you're not going straight into wedding band, so you no. are you forming your own band with your pals? I was, it, it all happened quite quickly, for, or I felt it happened quite quickly because I was in this, I mean I played football at the same time, I played fo- football up until I was under, well, under 15s. Yep. I was asked to um, play S form, which was what they called semi-pro I guess at the time, with Falkirk when I was Turn of 16. Yeah. It was probably too young to make the choice, but I kind even then, I don't know. I just, I was like, no, I just went to play the drums. But I wasn't even really playing the drums then. So a lot of people, though, it's like, they get to a point where it's like, right, I've got to choose I, what I've, I want I to I just do. felt like I had to. A lot of people love football. Aye. They love music. Aye. One of them was going to win. That's right. And that was, that was for me, so I, I just stuck at what I was doing and then ended up, um, I think my first band, no, in fact, my first band was formed with a, a local youth club. D- did you start, like, you started with Aye. the other guys? There was one of the, guy, one of the other guys who went to youth club, could, uh, youth club could play the guitar. So we found a bass player, just as kids. Uh-huh. So what age are you then, like, 13, oh, 14 f- or something like that? 14, uh, turning 14. Go on, do you remember your band, first band's name? No. I didn't, I didn't even think... I think, got, I think you're lying. I didn't even think it got far <laughs> enough that we got a name. Right, OK. <laughs> did, did you do any, Did you do? manage to do we a did, gig? We did a youth, a youth club gig. Um, it was that... Well, when I say it was that bad, the bass player didn't have a bass. 
So he used an, another electric guitar right. to just play bass notes on yeah. it. Um, and everybody loved us, I think. See, my first gig <clears> I played in a community centre. Aye. It's probably similar. Aye. Turned up, my amp didn't work, so I had, oh, to, no. had to plug in to the PA. Oh no. Aye. So you've got the, the voice and the guitar, <laughs> Your both guitar coming rattling it. through it. <laughs> and of course, Aye. it's rock, so it's just distortion, Aye. bass, Aye. get rid of all that middle, Aye. treble a wee bit, Aye. Aye. and just uh, full on distortion. I'm not caring about the singer, <laughs> <laughs> they'll hear my guitar. There's a reason why he's screaming, it's not because he's heavy metal, he can't hear himself over my no, guitar. No, no, no. Aye, so that was that was uh, that, and then um, was it just cover songs? It was just all cover songs. I did I dabbled a wee bit in um, writing. So you do you you play guitar as well? A wee bit, like a wee just bit. messing about. Aye, aye, I can play. I was going to say hundreds of chords. I can play loads of chords, but uh, no no necessarily in the right order. Right. Um, and quite slow changes. I just sounds I, like me. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I didn't play it enough. It, it would be like. Me saying to you, right here, I want to, I want to learn the guitar, and mm -hmm. you saying, right, how many chords do you know? Right, here's a song sheet. Just go away and learn this order. Aye. I would probably go through a couple of times and get bored. Yep. That again takes me back to, nah, I just want to have a guitar and pick it up now and again. I'm a drummer. Aye. I don't know. I sickened myself about ten years ago in the drums, actually of music. Yep. Um, I just got to a point. I don't know what it was. No idea what caused it. I just, I got to a point where I couldn't even have. I always drive for the music on in the car. Oh, yeah. From the kitchen cooking, music on, TV's on. It's even when just adverts were coming on with music, I was just like, Pfft. just overload. Oh, it was just way too much. Aye. I don't know. I've never really thought if I was overly busy leading up to that or what caused it. But then I just, I was like, that, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Um, and I took a wee break. Um, it lasted about six months, and I was like, no, I miss it too much. So here's it's... a question for you, right? Starting to get your own musical taste. You're a teenager, Aye. starting bands. What was the, do you remember what the very first album or single you ever bought? The very first single I bought was Sugar... I'm talking about with your own money, not a Christmas I, I, present. Or no, what? was Sugar Sugar by the Archers. Yep. And it was, that was also the first song I learned to play the drums. Was it? it was a single, it was a vinyl single. Right, okay. Um, and the reason I bought it... Do you remember it, where you bought it from? Yeah, um, it, oh, was it called Orbit? And it used to be in Falkirk. Right. Candle Rigs in Falkirk, which is now the big shopping centre. Oh, it's apparently getting knocked back down again, whatever. Right. Um, but I it was in there, and the reason I bought it was I had heard it, and I had went to when you're a kid, whatever you're into, you go to the library, you try to find books on it. It doesn't matter what the book is. It's just a, if it says drums on the front, oh, I'm taking that. Aye. And it was a book that I got that was almost sort of a colour coded teach yourself how to play the drums. Well, so it was like the bass drum was like blue dots and the yeah. snare drum was red dots and then the hi hats or whatever was like um So it's telling you basically yellow. when to hit each it, one. It was like taking what you would see as music, yeah. as printed music and just, just colour coordinated. It all coloured. Yeah. So you I you try and help you but so the lines and the spaces didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting reading it and thinking, oh I, oh, I can follow this. This is quite easy. So it's like page two. I was like, so you'd obviously playing drums as a teenager. Did you take music at school? Did you I, have any like a music teacher that maybe encouraged you? I or? absolutely. Yeah. And all because uh, so the schooling system when I moved. So I moved from where I was in Tullyckery to Grangemouth. Right. Okay. And my music teacher was at the time he was an old guy. He'll not be here, Mister Hill, um, and. I had been playing the drums for about a year and a half by that point, and when I say playing them, it was all I did. Aye. All the time in the house. Um, and he had picked up on this, but the school never had drum kit. Right, okay. They had a snare drum. <coughs> of course. That was it. So um, when I decided, so the, the, the schooling system in Grangemouth at the time was you went to primary school up to primary five. Yep. Then they had a middle school. It was a trial thing that they did in Grangemouth. Before high school. For high school, so you right. went to middle school for P6, P7, first year and second year. All right, okay. So I joined at the what would be known as the end of primary six, going into primary seven. So that's when they start to get you ready for what you'd be doing. Yeah, yeah. And first year and stuff. And I, 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 they knew I wanted to do music. They could see I was wanting to do music and stuff. So they they brought in a drumming teacher for me. Mm -hmm. Um, going into. What would be M3, 
Right. Which was first year. Okay. Um, and so it was just a, so you're probably have been playing for about a year. Aye. You know. And it was just all snare drum stuff. Yep. I can never remember the guy's name, the teacher that used to come in, but I'll never ever forget what he taught me the stuff because it was all rudiments. Yep. Because there wasn't a kit to knock about on and they flashy but some so stuff. Like, um, it was yeah, very. I, I remember having to do the, the snare. Aye. And a lot of it was. I mean, there's not much. Well, I'm saying there's not much you can do with a snare. Aye. There is, but you think it's just a snare. You're just hitting the snare. Aye, aye, but no, aye. No, it's rolls. It, it's controlling. It was everything. It's controlling aye. your um, volume level aye. up and yep. down and aye. all that sort of stuff. So it was all rudiments so and worked on aye. Speeding up, aye. all that kind of stuff. And that's that's when I was introduced to reading music, to follow music. I, at the time, it was only two hands. Mm-hmm. But that's the principle that I use when, when I'm teaching anyway, when I start somebody new. It's also, I'm reading this. Oh, aye. And following it. Aye. And um, understanding it. And he was pretty strict when I got it wrong. I've, a couple yeah. of times I got a drumstick in the back of the hand. Aye. But I'll ne- I will never ever regret that. Ever. Yeah. Because I don't think I would be... I'm quite comfortable with my drumming. I would love more time to be able to practice and become even better. Mm-hmm. You watch all these YouTube and TikTok guys and they're just doing amazing stuff. And I think... You're an incredibly talented drummer, plus you do all that fancy flash stuff on top of it. Where do you got the hours to practice all that? Like, these guys must sit at their kit. But what do you also do with it? Well, that's it. Aye. You know, sometimes, um, think that, sometimes think all that talent goes to waste. Uh huh. Sometimes. Kind of, it's actually a shame. Too much, too much uh, showmanship and not just. I mean, they say not just playing in a band, there's a lot of them do. But I think what you'll find though is that I, I used to follow a drummer, I can't remember his name now. The guy had a drum channel and he started off just by drumming along to your favourite songs. Aye. Right? And he was outstanding. Mm-hmm. And he, and I've been following this guy for about two years. Like he'd be putting videos up every couple Aye. of weeks or that. And he, he's like, oh, I've got, a, he was saying to the channel, I've got a band. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to love this oh, guy's aye, band. Aye. Went to check out his band. His band are rotten. Oh, all right. And I was like, this, I mean, this guy was unbelievably talented. Mm-hmm. But his band was rotten Aye. because they, they couldn't, too busy, everybody showing off, that they, they couldn't get together just, just, to uh, play the band. Music. But, so you, obviously you had your wee youth club type band, did you, did you start anything kind of after that? Pretty, pretty much quite quickly, that's, that's kind of what I was saying, was when I, when I had that band and it didn't, it's your first band, Aye, yeah, it's not going to last, it's really just a thing. Yeah. And then because I was practising all the time in the house, there was, um, a, we're great friends now, a guy that used to walk past outside my house where I stayed, I was in a block of flats, yep. leather and hell out of drum kit all the time. <laughs> yep. um, I had really good neighbours, really considerate neighbours. There was a guy who used to walk past a lot in Grangemouth. Yep. Um, <coughs> <coughs> is this important to bump into you? Maybe so you got start a well, he, well, he, 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 he was either going to the pub or he was because he think he would be just of that age. Because by then I was about yeah, thirteen, so or maybe eight, or eighteen. Aye, a few years older. Try to remember how the age thing went. And anyway, no, I was slightly older. I was slightly older than that. Um, and then eventually just came up to the door, chapped the door one day and, and um, it was my mum, my mum that answered the door and he asked, he was like that, sorry to bother you. Who's um, creating the beats? I've been passing <laughs> something down the drums and my mum said, oh he's not in, uh, um, he's not in just now son. Um, but my mum, rec- my mum used to run the local pub so my mum recognised him for the pub. So she said I'll get Stuart I'll, I'll get to get in touch with you. Great, so I did and then we set up, but so it was it was a guy, Michael Higgins, playing the guitar, his brother Kevin was the singer. So were they looking for a drummer? No, <coughs> excuse me, aye, they were looking for a drummer, right. um, and... Uh, so sorry, there was two guitars, did they have a bass player? They had already? a bass player, we ended up getting a bass player in and as well. And were they trying to write their own songs? We did all cover versions, uh, the band was called Cooling Towers, we became really... It, I was going to say success, successful as a local covers kind of pop pop band poppy band so and was that your first like playing like your first real gig hundred percent aye like, you playing in a pub or, or aye. something like that hundred percent that was my, that was my first gig that um, really got me playing in front of the non 
the non paying and, and the non knowing public, yep. like people that were coming in, like you didn't know them, they weren't your pals, Aye. they weren't your family. Strangers. They were absolute strangers coming Aye. in, and it worked and it did really well. Do you remember how your first, like, how did you feel your first gig? Do you uh, remember? It was, every song was like I was dipping my hands into a bath before I was because just sweat, it wasn't nerves. Like speeding up? No, I probably. Yeah. Played the song, speeding up, that's the other thing like people don't realise with, with drummers. It's like, I suppose, like the. When you see the big bands, I jump. It, it must be some some drug when it hits. You see aye, the body's fans, but it's like to, to, you've still got to keep a steady beat. Aye, aye. Because aye, the aye. other guys are just following you. No, I hundred percent. Because you you can you can still get that wee buzz that you that you you you, you, I mean, you don't you don't forget what your you know, drummer's job was realistically for, for day one was just keep time. Yeah, that's why you had marching bands. The guy with a side drum. That was it. Mm. Um, but you do, you do, you can sometimes just feel yourself getting a bit, and they will, whoa, yeah. they will just keep it around, they crowd them. Just, down, that, right. just uh, keep it steady. You see when you're playing the drums, Aye. when you're playing the band, are you linking in with the bass player? Is that is that how you listen? V- normally, that's normally depending on the song because it's, especially these days, because it's a wedding band, there's a lot of stuff that. Are you got in ear monitors? You use it, so I use in ears. What do you like to have that you can hear? Uh, the beat, my drums, but not a lot. Right. Pretty much my mix in my ear when I'm playing, I sometimes just take one of the other two, man. But it's, about the, it's probably about the volume of like your radio in the kitchen that you would listen to. Mm-hmm. But I know that kicking out of PA, there's this big loud party. But are you, so have you, you got everybody, relaxed, or do you prefer to have mostly the vocals and a bit of bass? Or? I, have a, I have quite a nice mix of everything based on the fact that because of all the different styles of songs we play, mm-hmm. if it was all rock, I could probably get through it with just the drums and the bass, and maybe a yep. wee bit the vocals. But because there's songs where I maybe didn't play for 50 bars, and then I come in, yep. I need to hear all the wee bits in the guitar, and I need to hear certain things. So mm-hmm. I've got quite a quite a level balance in my ears. Um, it's interesting to see what each every band I suppose is different. I right? I'm a big rock man, and uh, I've I've listened to how the how they do it. Uh-huh. Right, so Iron Maiden. For example, right, Aye. the drummer and the bass player go in and rehearse for forty-five minutes together to warm up before Aye. the rest of the band. Come Aye. In. The two of them are linked. Aye. 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 I don't. Aye. I don't know what they're like. Drums and, drums and bass is always. I don't know what they're thing. like on stage, right? But they Aye. they are a unit. Yep. Into themselves. That's right? pretty much what's classes your backline anyway. That's Metallica. Your... Aye. The drummer has in his ears. The rhythm guitarist, vocal, vocalist, Aye. same guy, right? So yep. it's those two, because they were just brought up. Aye. They started the band, they're just used to them two playing. Aye. Totally different from Aye. the other one. Well, but most but then would... you'll get other bands that are completely different. Aye. You know, maybe it depends on the style as well. Yeah, yeah. I know that um, Matt, the guitarist in my band now, he's got a lot of his own guitar in his ears and a wee bit of his guitarists love to hear themselves. <laughs> hey, and is that, is that bloody good? That, um, I didn't blame him. Hey, like, if I could turn my PA's to face me, I would. Aye, I say, well, I, I gig with a rolling kit, so it's a TD30 KV, the, well, it used to be top of the range. I think I got it, I had it for about a week and then they brought out a new one. Of course. Um, but um, it's incredible like to play on it. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's the sound from it is brilliant so the balance of in years is quite good yep. so you've not got this loud acoustic we didn't use any backline yeah so you've not got anything on stage but always at the pa right. and we've got what we've got in your ears so it does help create quite a nice sound so you're starting you're your, your, uh, getting into your your pub gigs when you're younger right are you is it all covers or are you trying to write it was, songs it was all covers well? we, we had a record company had came and spoken to us and they managed what was the a band called Big Wednesday right. from back in the day that were kind of on a par with like Shed Seven, mm-hmm. Marion, all these kind of bands. Yep. Um, and they came to see us, and nothing really happened after it. We were good, but it was just Not I don't know. I I think it's just sometimes you you can get carried away with the flowy things, mm-hmm. and you get an offer or an opportunity. You didn't think it through and you kind of head for it, but then it gets so far and you go, no, this, this wasn't the route that we were... But if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. Correct, correct. Yeah. So we stuck to covers. The band is most... 
late teenage bands they didn't last did that, just, uh, did that eventually just fall apart it, for it, whatever reason it fell apart for personal reasons yeah. <laughs> we had two brothers in the band right. <laughs> so that was that so these were like the, the, the oasis before I, the word oasis pretty much well, I've heard that before <laughs> plenty of times yeah. um, and then did you have any other bands after that when I, when I finished with that there was um, I had met up again with a friend a few years ago who was a bass player quite a talented guitarist as well but he was a bass player yeah. um, and he was wanting to put a band together and he knew another guitarist but we needed a singer mm-hmm. and we knew that there was a guy who was quite so I was a wee bit younger than them but we knew a guy who used to play in my mum's pub right okay he would go down he would just suffer that one of these wee Yam, what was it Yamaha DT10 drum machines oh right okay like pretty much start stop yeah that yeah. was it and then he was been there playing guitar and singing so we had thought we'll go down in there just check him out have a listen and see what he's like so we went down we goes down brilliant because you can always tell a band mm-hmm. like you can always tell a band when they walk into a room a million miles out so we walks in and we sits down and he's playing he does his set and he finished and he came straight up to us and went who's our band eh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how do you know? Right. He was staring at me all night. Right. So we then explained to him the guy's name was Archie. It's He's funny, so it's funny you say that. I've, I've just done a gig at the weekend. Aye. Right? And uh, standing plain, and there's a, a couple come in. Aye. And uh, they sit down just kind of to, to the right hand side of me, and uh, I can see the guy's watching. But everything you're like playing capo's going on I, I could just tell like what, what course is that guy playing and you can see him like saying his girlfriend right he's doing that because he's doing this and, and you can tell that's, that's not how I would do it so I would, if that was me I would just do it like he's that he's shite at that and he's shite at that <laughs> and he's really shite at that right? but uh, you could just tell it's like, he is a musician Aye. and he's telling his poor girlfriend who could not give a shit Aye. she was just like just go and buy me another drink but, uh, exactly but he's sitting there and he's Aye. like he's doing that he's doing that you could just tell and uh, it, of course it, the end of it he comes up aye alright mate I play the guitar and, but and you're like oh do you aye. I'd never have known <laughs> it's funny though you just aye. spot it a mile oh, off oh a mile away but that was so that's so when he came across to talk to us he was like oh, what he's what he's up to well we're actually looking for a singer yep you're what, interested what he's what he did like that well we wouldn't mind getting some like club social social club work aye because at that point that's when every social club was open yep thriving business it was yep. brilliant so he was like that, I, I could be into that. He says, but you, but you hate to do my set though. Right, yeah, I'm not able to really start learning other songs. So he had a folder, it was blue. I don't know how I remember that. But, and it was just paper and it was the, the lyrics handwritten out with the chords written above it. Right, old school. And beside yeah. the name of the song, he would have the preset numbers for the wee drum machine that oh, he had. Right. Right? So you could quickly just change the buttons Number and just, five or I just pushed aye. start, get, 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 the way you'd go. So we had a practice. But it worked for him. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And we had a practice. Now, this was me getting introduced to quick steps, fox trots, mm-hmm. Sam, salsa stuff. Like all really slow ballads, like stuff like that. Oh, I'm out my depth here. This is no yep. my thing, but I'll, I'll give it my all. Yep. So it was easy. He just he wrote down um, on an A4 bit of paper. The names of the songs and beside it he wrote what his pre-programmed drum patterns were right and he handed me the drum machine he did i'll see you next week that's crazy to like i was like to well, think well that's... the idea he was just go away and listen to and you listen, whatever push that's play then he didn't didn't he touch the fills didn't he at all Aye. just push play and listen to the groove and try and be quite close to the tempo and all that i was like that right great so as a couple of weeks passed i was yeah. like that got it now can yeah. i just it's like that like so fox truck with a fox was a truck oh i um, and then we we started gigging and played some horrific social clubs. Aye. Um, aye, aye. I found playing social clubs more daunting than going into it's like, like a night. sweat aye than going into like a sweaty pub with my mates and just playing pop stuff. I found what social. Was the, what was the difference then? Because I, I'm I, I miss the social club thing. So I'm aye. obviously I, I, I play in the pubs. Aye. But to, in my mind, I'm thinking. They must pretty much just be similar. When you do, when you do a social club and it's still the same. So all the regulars, yep. are always there. Of course. And they've always, they've always, they've always been in early. Aye. They must like set an alarm for six in the morning to go and put their glass down with a beer mat on top of it, yep. so nobody sits in the seat because they've sat there for a hundred years. Aye, and they could even go behind the bar. Oh, that's correct. So you Aye. go in and. 
it's their club, and it's and it's every member. So every every person that's a member of the social club, it's their club. You feel like you're answering to everybody. So when you go in, it's like playing to the biggest X Factor panel in your life Aye. because they they all think I didn't I didn't mean it disrespectfully, but they all think they own you yeah. because they pay their fees to the club. They didn't pay to get into a gig, and the club have paid us to play. But it's like every member just expects you to do everything. And they either like you or they they don't. Really that they want I, <laughs> I so, but it's and again so you, and when you're playing to and it, it, back then it was mostly older people it was working men's clubs, yeah, yeah. so you were playing to older people that knew how to tango and foxtrot and quickstep. Right. So see the tempo was like half a nano. Um, uh, beat they, out. they would let you know. All they know about it, like all they let you know. So there was a. So you've obviously played. In pub bands, aye, social club bands. Aye, aye. I obviously play gigs in the pubs. Now I'm used to people coming up to me in between a song and requesting a song. Aye. Do you? No, it's it's a lot easier for me being just guitar and singing. Aye. If I know it, I'll give it a shot. Aye. I, I think I know that. I'll, I'll try it. If there's four or five in a band, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. Because you've all got to know it, aye. and then each person's got to know. So it's okay knowing the song. You aye. need to know how to play it. Aye, aye. So do you get that? Did you get that? As in people would come up and say, "Any chance you could play?" We, blah blah blah. We or have, did you or did you try have a sort of set list that you kind of stuck to? For all of my life, that's always been a. I was going to say a bugbear. That's not fair to say. It's always been a thing. It's always been a. F- it's 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 an. It's a qualification that every band and every musician would like to carry and like to have. The fact that when you're playing in your band or like yourself on your own, yep. and somebody comes up and asks for a song, what do you mean you can't do it? Mm-hmm. You, no, no, you, it, it just it goes like this, oh, and I, they'll tell you they'll, they'll mumble some words that's right. like like me singing a song. It's the wrong words. Or they'll go. The, the one I get all the time is, uh, oh, but it's easy. Aye. 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 It's just it's just GDF. The guy that played you last Saturday Aye. done it. Aye. It's just, it's just Aye. GDF. Aye. I mean, I, but I still don't know <laughs> the song. song. I still don't know from Aye. start to finish. Aye. Some, so we've got, uh, and then when people have got a drink in them, Aye. they can be rude. They, they might not mean to be rude. No, they that. didn't. They didn't. Uh, they just they, didn't they know. Might, I've had people co- uh, come up to us and they've started with a... Uh, I'm not trying to be rude, <laughs> but I'm about to be rude. See the singer they had in last week. Aye, really good. Aye, thanks, mate. Aye, that's, that's me. I'm good to go now. That's like no pressure. Aye, it's um, it, it, it can it can be off putting. You, you've, you've got you've got to have a thick skin. We do get a lot that come up and ask for a song. Yeah. Of course, the current thing now, like all technology, is it's all just typed out in a phone mm-hmm. now, and that's quite nice because there's no because. You're playing a song, and we, t- oh, currently anyway, we're trying to be as professional as possible. Ah. The bride and groom or whoever's paying the bill has paid a good bit of money for us, and we're playing. Yep. And if the singer just stops singing to talk to this die. drunk person that yeah. wants to talk to him for 30 seconds about a song that they want, yep. it just ruins the empty the dance floor. The great story, I, I, I spoke to Barry about this in his episode, and he's obviously had this as well. But it's the person that comes up and, and says to you, um, they, they think they're a sound technician. Aye. All right? Aye. And uh, I, had a, I had a person, this was maybe a couple of years ago, he came up to us, uh, I'd been doing a few songs, and he came up and he was like, I'm not trying to be rude, but uh, your guitar sounds terrible. And I'm like, all right, okay. He's like, I, I don't know if it's out of tune, you know, but it, right. it, just, it sounds awful. So I'm thinking in my head, is this guy maybe a, a guitarist? Aye, like, oh, do, you, aye. do you play a guitar? No, no, I, I, I've never touched a guitar. <laughs> I was like, all right, give me two seconds, and, and as I said to Barry, you, you turn around to the mixer. Aye. You're not doing anything, you're, you're just aye, pretending. Aye. Dear song comes back five minutes later. Hundred times better, much mate. better, mate. What difference you made? You just got kind of trying to do it, but it can put you off. Oh, of course it can. See, see if you, <clears throat> it can knock your confidence. The same amount of people, it takes a lot of confidence to get up in front of people. I know. There's there's a nice thing about playing in a band, aye. where you've you can you've got another three or four guys to to rely on your wee gang. Aye. That you can, you know, if you're not feeling it, the other ones will pick you aye. up. Aye, it's tough if you're aye. just by yourself. If you're out of yourself, that's the thing. That's that's this the comfort blanket or the safety blanket, whether we've been a drummer, because you, you you never go out yourself. Aye. And the good thing about being a drummer, I suppose, is it's almost like 
Go and leave me alone. I'm playing my drums. You can't get to me because I've got. I'm surrounded by my drums. Aye. So if there's going to be an arsehole, you can deal with one of those. I other selfishly guys. sit at the back and laugh when this happens, mate. Yeah. And I'll, I'll not hide that. I sit at the back and laugh when I see the stress it causes. Whether your guitarist in the middle of a rip roaring solo and somebody wants to talk to him on his pedals, yeah. Or with the singer singing and he's at a bit. So he's playing the guitar as well. And he's singing and we're trying to keep it all good. Trying to keep the dance floor nice and busy. And but like there's a great one. I, I think it's sometimes when you're playing. Like many times I'm playing, and they come up to speak to you. Aye. And, and I'll, I'll keep playing. Aye. But I'm like, mate, I'm actually in the middle <laughs> of a song mean. here and you want to have a conversation. Aye. Can you maybe hold off till then Aye. or something like yeah, well, that? We joke about it. We kind of throw it back at them and say, would you like us to come into your work in your middle of the day and and Aye. just sit on your desk at your office Aye. for 30 seconds and talk rubbish to you? Aye. So, so you're doing all your pub gigs and that. Aye. Does that just go on for a while? <laughs> like... I don't. How long have you been doing that? How did? When did you progress from the pub stuff onto the wedding band, or was there anything in between? Well, we I progressed from the pub stuff to the the band that I set up with the singer for the pub. Mm-hmm. I mean, the wee drum machine thing, which was a club band. But when you become a club band, that's when you start to get asked to play weddings and birthday parties. Yep. So you kind of just. But it's the same set. You're not changing anything at mm-hmm. all. It just progresses into that. And I did that for years and years. So, like probably about 10 years give or take which took yep. me up to being mm, about nearly 30 by that point right um, and there was a that's when I, I, again the band it did not 40 bits but it just it ran its course it, it did absolutely um, so I took a I took what was going to be a break. Okay. Uh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen at all because it was sort of a, oh, Stuart's not playing over Stuart, could you come and do Friday night with us? Oh, yeah. Could you do next Friday and Saturday with us? Can yeah. you, Stuart, can you do Sunday? Can you... And I, I, I depth, I became... And I, I, I really enjoyed it because I really enjoyed the challenge of having to learn new songs, having to play with You probably, me. in hindsight, you'll look back at that and go see the amount of stuff I learned. Oh, you, 100%. That time, maybe Aye. not even thinking it so much at the time because you're just Aye. turning up and playing. I've got to Aye. this. But when aye. you look back now, yeah. you go, that set me up for anything that I'm doing. Oh, aye. Because if you're going to do, if I'm going to, if it, my, my plan was to probably do what I'm doing anyway. I didn't ever see myself as a touring drummer or a, anything else like that. Mm-hmm. Or a, even a session drummer, I don't think. I just, I want to just play in a band with a bunch of guys that I, that I get on with. Yeah. Make money, just have a happy life. Huh. Just have a you nice, happy balance. If somebody's going to give you money to play them, brilliant. Aye, aye. I still, I mean, all of my friends wind me up for uh, like, maybe not delu- actually work. Maybe not delusional thinking that no. I'm going to tour the world. Don't get me wrong, it'd no. be brilliant if, some, if, no. you, if you got that opportunity. Because that's what some people aye. would dream of doing. Yep. But the, the last... there is something about just, I mean, it was your, initially your hobby. Aye. And now you get paid to uh, enough that you, you, you can afford to do this, that and the Oh, aye, aye, aye. For what was essentially your hobby. Aye, because I've, I've bought cars, I've bought houses, I've been around the world with earnings that I've made for a hobby. Yeah. As, as much as... So, the, aye. obviously, Sneaky Treacle is the wedding band aye. that you're in. Were you in any wedding bands prior? I was, in a, I was in a couple. I was in one called Ghost. I was in one called First Class. And what did you just play for a while and then just decide it was time to shift? Aye, it was. Um, I just aye, it was. It was time. There was a couple of things happened uh, back and forward with different bands, yeah. different lineup changes. But it's always character clashes, all that stuff. Of course it is. Yeah. Um, and I made the choice. Thankfully, I've I've never been sacked for a band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's been my choices, um, right or wrong, whatever. Um, yeah. But I so I joined Sneaky Musical. Well, I was going to ask you. Aye. Did, how long has Sneaky Treacle been on the go for? G- uh, ten years. But you didn't start the band? No. So you, uh, they had a previous they drummer? Were a, they were a year and a bit old when I joined. Um, the drummer, John, who, well, who was the drummer before me, he, he started the band. Right. With them. And, um, and was it the same three other three guys? No. No, it was the guitarist and the bass player that started up the band. We got John in to play the drums. John now plays with a Freddie Mercury tribute. 
Right, okay. He's touring around the world. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to Probably. be the touring drummer. Aye. Um, so um, the, the job had came up. I had planned on taking, again, a wee bit of time so off. So how did they contact you? They, they ch- I had spoke to Del Cotton, who owns Hyraband. Right, okay. Um, and and were you just Del saying I'm looking for work? De- no, I didn't actually. Del had said to me, look, there's a band for Glasgow. They're going to be really good. He said, um, if I'm just, I'm letting you know, I can't, uh, there isn't any, um, the job's yours if you want it Aye. and stuff. But um, they said to me, if you want, if you, if you want to form yourself for it, I'll give you the bass player's um, email address. Okay. And he says, and I'll speak to them as well because I know you. He says, but all I can really give them is like a character reference because mm-hmm. I've known Dell for years. Um, so I got in touch with, with the band um, just over eight years ago, and I sent them. Um, well, I agreed I was going to apply apply for the job. Right. So I sent them my CV. Okay. So I'm a drumming CV. Um, it's like by, by, via email. Huh. So I just had the bands I'd previously played with. I listed my gear. Um, I sort of shortened a very shortened breakdown of all the songs I could play but they know by this point even just reading that aye this guy's got experience aye he's got you, you know it's not just a a drum kit out of Argos I mean he, no. he's got the right gear aye. this aye. is what we're looking for aye um, you know, you've gave him a list of songs I mean we all know what's Aye. What's popular? What's not? Oh, aye, that's right. And I had to, there was um, could you call it short clips to or, or um, shortcuts to clips of me on YouTube aye, playing aye. different drummers and doing different things. And so they narrowed it down for a lot of drummers. There was a lot of drummers because they were because they knew they were going to be busy. They were going to make money. They narrowed it down, and then they had arranged to come through um, and see me at my studio. So is it just the two of them? Just yeah, I the singer. And the bass player because the guitarist was down in London visit right, his mum. Okay. Matt was in London visit his mum. So they came through. Um, we spoke for five minutes, and I said, "Do you want to make, make a tea or a coffee? That'd be great." I went through to the kitchen. I came back, and they said, "We really just tell you you've got the job." I was like that, but I've not even really because my drums were in my studio. Because I was expecting to yeah. just like, have to play. Cause and, I, but the other thing about that, I mean, if you send me a video of you playing drums, aye. I can watch it. I know whether you're you're capable or Aye. not, right? You know, so they'll they'll have known that you are capable, Aye. right? You've got the right gear. You've done all this experience. You've um, you, you know all these songs, which is probably a lot of songs that they were playing. Aye. Aye. The one thing though that destroys a band as well though is personality. Aye. You've Aye. got to get on. Well, they said that as well. But, so I mean, you know straight away if you Aye. if even you meet someone, I like this guy. This guy a dick. Aye. 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 And they said to me that I was... And in they the, said you're a dick, but they still got it. I still got it, brilliant. <laughs> but uh, as long as I'd accept half the money they were going to pay me. Aye. No, it was... Um, and then they told me that I was the only drummer or the applicants that sent them a CV. Like, so they were getting... So you're prepared. They, they were getting text messages. Uh, Gives you a job. I've got a drum kit. Can't, uh, not quite that bad, Aye. but that was... Uh, and how difficult is it to try and be as professional as you can? Because it's, it's a, it was it's a business. Still, it's it, a job. Aye. It was no, a job this application. Isn't it just hanging about your pals in the pub. No, or no. Something like that. Um, so, like you said, they could read through the, mm-hmm. so that, that. We know about them. We just need to spend five minutes with the guy Aye. and just see what it's like. So, that's almost 10 years you've been playing with that. Them. Was, no, that's. Um, this is me in my eighth year now. Right, okay. Aye. So, aye. So, um, obviously, I've seen you. Ah, you I have. Know, that's that right. Five that's years ago. I know that you're good, right? Who are the guys that are in the band? Because like, uh, I don't know who the who the guys are. So who's in so Sticky Trico? Matt Matt Clark plays the uh, lead guitar. Uh, he yep. does some vocals as well. Um, Tommy Moonen's the bass player, and Dugsy's the singer. His name's Craig McDougall, but uh, it's Dugsy. And are they are the other guys like childhood friends, or are, um, did they, how did the the they all get together? Matt, Matt the guitarist, and Tommy were um, friends. They played in a band together before that right. previously. Um, and that band didn't work out. Um, then I think the story goes that they, they tried to put another band together. They got a they got a drummer in, which was John, that mm-hmm. left, and they got a singer in. Yep. They rehearsed. They went and did one gig, and then the singer 
said he was leaving the band because he um, didn't have the confidence to do it. He did that's when he realised oh, right, that okay. it wasn't it wasn't for him. Mm-hmm. So after this time spent and getting everything organised, they then had to go and find another singer. Right, Craig. I'm not sure how, I'm not, I think somebody knew him through somebody, mm-hmm. um, had got in touch with him to say, look, do you want to come along for a rehearsal or try to put a yeah, band? Yeah. Try to f- he, he knew, Craig knew John, that's what it was, the drummer. So he came along and he pretty much, yeah, probably, he probably what? sang about half a bar and they went, aye, ah, perfect. Yeah. Because the, like, the, the, the three guys in the band are exceptionally talented. Yeah. Um, as a band, we do, we do brilliant, but when you actually hear the three of them on their own, when you get a chance to just focus in on what they do, when we're recording, that's when you that's when you mostly see it or hear it. Well, that's when you know whether someone's good or if see if they're um, hiding behind others. Aye, that's when it becomes apparent. Aye. We have a it's such a joy to go in and record with this band because there's hardly any retakes. Yeah. Right. No, they're no perfect. No, I'm no perfect. What have you? But when we go in, there is no, There has never uh, all the stuff we've recorded. We've never had to spend days and days in the studio. But, but if you know your stuff, you shouldn't have to. Correct. Yous are really busy. Aye. Are you? Do you have to practice now, or do, or do you pretty much? We, we, t- we not, it normally gets to a point where there's a wee, a wee almost kind of build up of songs. That we either want to polish parts off, we want to sort out vocal harmonies, we want to. It could be a certain song that's been asked for a wedding that's just really obscure. Right. Like, uh, and uh, is there a lull in the year where you're, you're not busy that it gives you the opportunity to maybe meet up and do all this stuff? I, I, I bet now, around about kind of January, February, we are quieter, but right. qu- quieter, not dead. Ah, you're I still, mean, we're, you're still, still we're still pretty much uh, one night a weekend. Um, so is, or that, two. is that enough? That you do you do you need to practice or do you get together more to try and polish the things that you don't get a chance to do? That's all we really need to do is to get together to sort things because we're all individually competent. I would say mm-hmm. there's a lot of communication, there's a lot of messages and and emails and stuff go back and forth about you past have, the songs and yeah, things. But you've been playing long enough now, though. Aye. You will all be able to read each other. Oh, 100%. Right? The songs that we've never played before, and the first time we get to hear it is when I go. Yeah. We start playing the song. Yeah. So here's a question for you, right? Yeah. So I've asked a few people this, and this is, this is a weird one because it. Obviously, I play. Then you ask me, then you'll get the real answer. I, I play. <laughs> I play the pubs. I always think the we, wedding band. It's the, like another level up, right? Uh-huh. The, the pubs. You don't need to be as. You, I still think you need to be professional. Aye. Because they are paying you aye, to aye, entertain aye. the punters. Aye. Right. Aye. So you've got to show up, and you're still going to be able to do your stuff. Uh huh. But. It's not as serious. So, for example, when I go and play a pub gig, I don't have a set list. No. Right? I've got three hours. Aye. Right? Normally nine to twelve, something like that. I'll show up. I can just read the crowd, right? I'm going to try Aye. this song. Aye. I've not played this song for a year. I'm just going to give it a shot. Uh-huh. Somebody requests a song. Uh, I'm about 80%, right? I'll just, I'll just do it. And get, uh-huh. I, can't, I would imagine you can't really do that at weddings because you've, you've got to know... At hundred percent. Do you have? Do you have a, a? If you're playing, let's say, for example, you're playing forty songs or right. whatever it is, right? Do you play pretty much the same? It it can't every week, every gig. You, it it can be. I mean, you you will know. This is a good song. This is going to go down well. This Aye. is this isn't going to work. We know we know the difference. It's actually it's 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 not quite regional, but so we've got like a skeleton set that we know. I mean, if you go online and look at your set list, there's something like about well, your, your list of songs. There's about 250 songs in it. But if you were doing 40 songs, would you would, would you probably have 30 of them that are pretty much the same at each gig, and then you've got 10 to play a bit with? There can be, aye, something like that. But it also or, or depends. Or learning a first dance aye, song that's maybe something different. It also different. depends. Like I'm saying about the regional thing, because for me, we're playing anywhere Aberdeen mm-hmm. area, Scrap Jerry Cinnamon and all the skinny Chavy yeah. stuff, they're just not into it. Yep. At all, so that comes at the set straight away, and you're like that. Right? So we're so we're playing Glasgow tomorrow night. Yep. Jerry Simon and and whatever else back in. But I'm not with it sounding insulting, but but then you've also got so the bride and groom. Well, I was going to say, do, do, does, does the bride and groom? I I mean, they'll obviously ask for a first dance. Aye. Do I don't know how it works. Do some of them ask for 
other songs that can you can you play this because this is our favourite song they will, we, we normally allow sort of a, up to about three maybe four unknown songs per gig mm-hmm. now so we do minimum let's say let's call it 100 minimum 100 weddings a year yeah normally more mm-hmm. and corporate events so if you've got 100 gigs that somebody's asking for four songs every gig, mm-hmm. that's 400 new songs a year yeah. that we've got to learn. Yeah. What you also get is, um, because we have that online list of songs that we can play, brides, grooms, mm-hmm. mother of the bride, whoever, they'll go on it, they'll download it, and they'll highlight, play this, play this, yeah. play this, don't play that, don't play that. Play it's it. funny enough, I, 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 I use that as a wee trick. So you know, as I was doing gigs, people coming up, Obviously, the more you do it, you learn more songs. And Aye. What I'm, I'm at the stage now where somebody will come up and request a song. It's always the same song. So you, Aye. More, nine times out of ten, I can already play it. Uh-huh. Or I was even planning on possibly playing Aye. it anyway. Aye. But you make it. Like, I need bother. I'll throw that in. Aye. Aye. I'll right? try it for you. But I've I done a list. Um, and I just I put it in my guitar case. And if there's a lot of people asking for stuff... and. And, uh, but they'll be asking for things I don't know. You don't want to keep knocking people back. This is in the no, pubs, right? Aye, but aye. I'll say, like, here's um, 150 songs. Go and pick whatever you want. Now aye. I know I can play those 150 aye, songs. Aye. So they think that they're, they're, they're doing it. Oh yeah, I picked these five songs aye. and played them. Aye. But, Already know if you're going to do it, so it's not really a challenge, yeah. Steve. But, but you're pleasing but, but the, the, the punters. If you've got your set list online, I suppose they can look at it and go, I'd love to do, used to do this, 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 but you already know you can play it. Aye, 100%. The only downside so is they, they might feel special as well. Aye, they're getting, to, they're getting to pick yeah. a playlist. The only downside that can sometimes happen, and of course it has happened, is if the bride and groom, or maybe the bride, or maybe the groom, or whoever, are big rock fans. Yeah. They just go right down the set looking for all the rock stuff, or the heavy rock stuff of the day, which isn't really an awful lot. I mean, there's a good mix in your set, there really is. Mm-hmm. But, and then you turn up, and they're the only rock fans. Yeah. Their guests, aren't they? The old grannies sitting yeah. in the corner, are they, they in ACDC and stuff? So it's a bit difficult, but you've, what we've got to accept is they're paying for their service. What, I, what I'd said with Barry previously, I suppose that the big difference between weddings and pubs uh-huh. is you go to a wedding, you, you have the crowd on your side before you've played one more. Oh, aye. aye. You turn up to a pub. Aye. And there's no guarantee that they're going to like you. No. They're going to like anything that you're playing. No. It's no. a sort of hit or a miss. That's a disrespectful thing because when people walk into a pub, it's just that, oh, there's live music on. And yeah. that's, that's Some normally the end, can no. sometimes be the end of the, the, the connection between you yeah. and the crowd. Whereas if you're at a wedding, people are there, they want to have a good time. Aye. I know that um, when my sister got married, uh-huh. I think the only thing that they'd said, said to, to herself and the groom was, um, if the bride and groom get up to dance, generally everybody will then get up. That's right. If you s- sit in your arse. Aye, aye. Or go through to the bar the aye. whole night. The, the floor can be empty. Oh, aye, aye, 100%. We did, the best example of the surprise element sometimes is we did um, Loch Green Hotel at Hugman Aegis there. Okay. So what did we do early and set up because it was a big proper fancy meal and stuff like that, black tie event. So we went down nice and early. We got set up and then we could see all the guests coming in and they were all like average age, about 70. Mm-hmm. And then we're thinking, right, we've got quite a bit of old stuff in the set. We'll throw in some ballads, yep. give them a chance to slow down and have a nice wee dance. We'll put in some Kelly stuff. Yep. That's expected at Hugman A and things like that. Right, that it's going to be a tough night. It's a tough, because it was a long night. Because mm-hmm. Hugman A, we were on till... But you'll do a huge range one. and hopefully cut. There's something Aye. for... So that's what we hope. But we kind of panic because there was a lot... We didn't panic, but there was a lot of old... Yep. And when I say old, I mean proper old people there, like right? Cocoon. <laughs> So we went away and we got fed as well while they were getting fed and yep. everything was great. And then we went back through and like that. So we've, we've got the set list that's already been arranged for two or three days before the gig. We've all got a copy of it. But by this point, it's all scored out. So well, here's a question in. for you. Who puts the set list together? Craig, the singer. So the other three, you and the other two guys are happy for him to put it together. Aye. How does he put it together? What, what makes a song make it and not make it? Well, experience tells you what will work and what won't mm-hmm. work. The regional thing again tells you what will work and what won't yeah. work. Um, and it's, I'm assuming from a, a singing point of view, mm-hmm. 
three, four hours is a long time of singing. So is he working out as in, we're going to start with a banger? Yeah. You know, well, maybe it'll kind of dip a wee because, bit. This because point Matt, and 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 Matt and Tommy both sing main parts as well. So it'll be like five or six songs or whatever. And then Tommy will sing one just to give a wee kind of water break. Right. He still plays guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, stuff. So, and it can also be... I mean, you know what? Some seven weekends, eight belters in a row. There's some weekends we do... Three, four, five nights in the trot. So, he, so he's got to take that into account as well without right. letting the, the client down. So will he just say, right, this is what I think they should do? Aye. Say now to you guys, you've got the opportunity to come back and say, listen, I'm not sure about that. Well, one. no, so we didn't normally because everything's pan off. Because everything that's in the set. You're at the stage now where you're happy to trust his judgment and just go with it. Aye. Because sometimes it does need to be tweaked on the night. Like just, maybe we'll go, right, take song 15 and. Aye, aye. Do that third or something because it'll, it'll create. And then there's nights where you've got, like, if you start too heavy, like when I say heavy, like, can you big dancey at the start of the night? Yep. People are If they're no into it, yep. they've just ate a four course meal if they're no yep. into it. Or sometimes you do that and the, the dance floor's it's like somebody's pulled the plug and everyone just goes what? on the dance floor. So you, on, a, on paper, 24 or 48 hours before a gig, you didn't know. Have you got certain songs as in, see when I'm playing the pubs? Aye. Right, I'll have four or five songs that I know, see if I'm losing the crowd. Aye. If I play one of these songs, Aye. it gets people back on your side. Yep. I'm assuming it's the same. A, li- a little respect by erasure, and it drains me. Mm-hmm. I, so I, I, I don't hate playing some it. Some Johnny Cash. Aye. Oh, I don't, no, it's an alright song. Aye. I'm bored, sick of it, because uh-huh. I've played it at every gig for 10 Aye. years now. Yeah. But for some reason, people just... Aye. We did a dancier version of Country Roads as well. Yep. And um, that's the same thing. Um, the Killers, Mr. Brightside. Well, here's a question as well, right? See, when I'm playing playing the gigs, right? Like when I'm doing... I'm playing, um, you know, different sets each time I play, play the pubs. What I'm finding is, see... If you've got a, a new song mm-hmm. that comes out, new artist, Aye. whatever, right? This is really popular, I'm going to learn it, Aye. play it. Most times, it's got a shelf life. 100%. Of, of, Aye. You can play it for six months, it's going to be great. Year later, eh, it's going no bad. Aye. Year and a half, this is sounding really tired. Aye. I'm going to have to take this out and replace yep. it with something else, Aye. right? However... You then go and throw in a song that's 50 years old, Bad Moon Rising by Cadence Clearwater Revival, right? Aye. Played it a million times. Yep. It still gets a good reaction. Aye. And it's been on the go for 50 years. I know. Do you find that happens as well with the wedding? All the, all the time. There's What's your a, thoughts on, on why? Artists like um, Ed Sheeran. Coldplay, and yeah. I know Coldplay's a bit kind of marmite for everybody. You either really like them or you just don't like them. Well, uh, in the pubs, you're saying Ed Sheeran. Aye. Right? Castle on the Hill. Aye. Right. I'll still throw it in maybe what you know, a few uh-huh. requests of that, but that was really popular. Sounds a bit tired now. Aye. Little Line Man by uh, Mumford and Sons was Aye. massive. Aye. Yep. You don't hear anybody play no. it no. anymore, but you still play. Bad Moon Rising, Painted Aye. Black, Aye. Help by the Beauty, like, it's still good. Around. Why do you think that is? I, 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 I think people are comf... Bah. I mean, there must be nostalgia with it, with there some will, of it. There will be... I, I, there will be a lot of... So you can... I know for a fact that when we do some of our gigs, there's music, lovers there, mm-hmm. and then the rest of them are just wedding guests. Yep. And you can always tell the music lovers because even if they, if you play an old classic, yep. they'll be sitting in their seat and there may be no dance, but they'll be sitting singing along and clapping right. along and just doing the whole thing. And sometimes that's all you need because nobody dances. Mm-hmm. Can you can't kind of just because or just because there's a live band on you need to all get up and dance. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work like that but at all. Even just when you finish a song, Aye. see if you've got two or three people that like I find it in the pub. See if you've got two or three people that clap. Aye. It encourages everybody else oh, to get into it. Aye, aye. Rather aye. than it being like tumbleweed. Aye. But that you probably, I would imagine you don't get that too much at, at weddings. No. But music um, music is, such a, is such a big thing and such an important thing in people's lives. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's in everything. TV adverts, movies, the radio, the, it, it, just listening to 
daytime music anywhere. Yeah. The, 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 like these new songs that they come out, they, I think people, they, they like, I think it's, there's like almost like a grounding for the old. But it's like what you're saying, I suppose, you, you never, the songs you first fell in love with. Aye. You still like they, you, they never lose you so for different it's, reasons. Maybe it's the songs that you there's grew probably, up with, but, but then I'm thinking maybe if, if you, like my, my daughter's about to turn 18, so will, will Castle on the Hill be to her? Aye. What? Aye, unfortunately. You know, aye. Something? Aye. Maybe like for that generation, but yeah, it's weird. Like it's when I'm, it's weird when I'm playing the pubs. You just keep going back to see the anything. Old standard so, classics. See anything um, from two thousand backwards. Aye. Usually goes down decent. Aye, aye. And anything after that, it, it, it's a, a hit or a miss. Now you've yeah. maybe got like the killers, like Mister Brightside will be going down aye. in 50 years time that will still, be, still be played that, right. that, but that's rare aye you know there, there's not a lot like that but it, it's hard to see when you're trying to pick songs to play as well aye see many times I'm like this is a great band this is a great song I'm going to learn it I'm going to play it aye you play it and it goes down terrible aye. nobody is interested in aye. it aye right see the many times you don't want to be playing hit after hit after hit, so you you've got what I call fillers, uh -huh. right? So I'll, I'll learn. You know, I've got maybe fifteen that I'll fire in across the three hours, Aye. and it gives it's to me it's a wee bit of a filler. It gives me a bit of a breather. It's, it's a bit of a nothing song, and it goes down amazing. I know. And, and I'm like, why is that going down great? This great song is just. I think there's, the radar. It's, it's weird it's to try almost, and figure it out. It's almost like there's too much music now. There's too many artists coming out bringing out songs that um, it's we're, we're just all clogged like it's all it's too much what do you think like, about music as well though because in the sec right the 60s uh -huh. you've got all this music coming out I, suppose, I think it's kind of it really did start in a lot of it in the 60s where this stuff has never been heard before we're trying things aye, that has never aye, been done aye. right the 70s had that as well the 80s had its own unique sound that was different from the 70s and the 60s. Aye. You could even say the 90s was different uh, from the from after, from the previous uh, decades. Personally, I think from 2000 onwards, though, everything had already have, everything had been done. Mm -hmm. So there's still great stuff coming out nowadays. Aye, aye. But I feel that it's a rehash of what's already been done. Sometimes it's just as good, sometimes uh, it's maybe even better, sometimes the amount, the amount of songs, it falls a wee bit short. And the amount of songs that come out now that are covers for old songs that they maybe just put a dance beat at the back. Yeah. That's capturing the kind of youth, the, 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 the danceable crowd mm -hmm. that you might find. I mean, American Pie. Yeah. We didn't really ever play that until up, up until about six months ago. Or ten verses. Well, hopefully, aye, just about. Aye, it's like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a night filler. That's for sure. But yeah. it's that again is one of these classics that everybody and their dog gets up and dances to. Mm -hmm. Now, like, how do kids know this? Yeah, and the, the minute the chorus hits, aye, but and then it's so simple. But then we can play a Taylor Swift song and five folk will dance to it. Does that does that sum up the reality of good quality music and Taylor Swift's just? I mean, she's a Billionaire, probably, mm -hmm. but is it just a fad? Is it just a? Is it just a? Taylor Swift's cool, but no, I'm no, I'm not into Taylor Swift because everybody else yeah. is into Taylor Swift. But the older stuff, everybody likes the older stuff. There isn't it. It's like there's no competition over what you like in music. It's like that. Oh no, that's oh that song for 1970. Yeah. We all we've all got to like that. Yeah. His music was great back then. It's just weird that the new stuff it really struggles to remain in the set. Aye. Aye. And like, you look at like Lewis Capaldi, right? He, uh -huh. He's obviously took a break now. He will probably come back with a new album. Aye. And it'll have two or three massive big songs and it. it'll do absolutely amazing. But all his previous stuff, it's almost like, not forgotten, but it's no. almost like it's had its time. Aye. Right? We need something new now. Aye, aye. I, like, I don't think in 30 years' time people are still going to be wanting that song. No. But they're still going to be wanting the Rolling Stones. Aye. And the Beatles and Credence and U2 and the Killers and... Uh -huh. 
and a lot, of the, a lot of the new modern songs have been written with just as much quality and experience and musicianship as the the, the all of the seventies and stuff. Technology but, wise, it, it probably even sounds better. Aye, that's right. But it's but you're right. It's funny how how. Everybody just kind of goes, well, to try and figure out because I've it. asked a few people and nobody's got an answer. It's like music so lovers. It's like music lovers have got to because I would I would definitely say it's it, music lovers have got to love the stuff from the seventies and the sixties mm -hmm. and the eighties because that's what started it all. Although of course from Wisney, you went to Mozart and yeah. Beethoven and stuff, but it, it, it's like no, I'm a real music lover because I because mm -hmm. I know all that stuff. The, and then there's so I was talking to, to um, Sean Aitchison uh -huh. singer of the Shermans I don't know if you know them right and as he was saying he, he's a massive pop fan mm -hmm. but he's saying pop music in the 80s mm -hmm. going back the way is not pop music that you think of today no 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 and pop music back then was bands aye whereas pop music nowadays is one person so artist with aye. you know a sort of dance track behind them it, it, it's different sounding yep maybe there's something in that that I don't you know if you've got a band playing you want to hear a, a song that was written for a band aye aye it's maybe something like that aye but um, see what's is there a, is there a see playing in a wedding band mm -hmm. is there anything that that drives you up the world is it that people think it's this and it's not so see for example like What's the is there any you got any good stories for wedding bands like things that you've seen at weddings that you're just like I can't believe I'm sitting here actually watching this unfold. Oh, I've seen everything at weddings, mate. I've seen everything at weddings. Look at, look at, look at, <laughs> remember the Adam Sandler film, the wedding aye, singer. Aye. Okay, that was back in the eighties. It was a comedy movie. And it was a bit silly, but uh, is there any like stories you're just like I'm I'm sitting here playing and I can't believe I'm sitting watching State, this. State, well. Uh, We've seen uh, a, a bride's dad getting um, lifted by the police. Is it usually too much drink involved? Taking drink into premises, taking cans of tennis yeah. lager into a very, very fancy mm -hmm. establishment in the Loch Lomond. Right. And the bar staff warned him. And then he was like, that's my daughter's wedding, I can do what I effing like. No, you can't really, because if we allow you to do it, we can lose our licence. So see, as a band playing at weddings, Aye. have you had any disasters or near disasters with regard to the band? Uh, we've had we've had our speakers and lighting rack on one side land almost on a table with some uh, drunken girl because we've got a, so the, the speakers mm -hmm. and then we've got a, a, a flat plate with a pole that comes out for the lights right, right. and she decided to use it to, 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 to dance on a pole right, okay. and she went to my pole dancer for the night she didn't for one second think that if it came across it was going to pull yeah. everything over and luckily because the speakers are heavy they just missed yeah. a table but and seats with regard to the band I assume you guys are more than capable of if something happens if somebody messes up the, the other three can recover oh aye so with regard to playing I don't imagine you guys have any issues. You are the worst. Solid. The worst thing that's happened song-wise was when another band that I played in years ago. Um, there was a lot of technology. There was still emails and YouTube and stuff mm -hmm. and things. But we had been asked to play a first dance, um, and the singer had got in touch. Singer keyboard player had got in touch with us all. He tells the name of the first dance. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. But we all learned different versions of it. All right, okay. So we turned up on the day, and somebody happened to just say something, and the other guy went, "What? What? What middle bit? <laughs> what solo? What? Yeah. What? Because uh, there's like the you get the, the American radio edit, you get the UK radio edit, you get the whatever, you get the the ballads, right, okay. you get the slow version, you get the dance version, yeah. or aye." And so. how does your um, how does your singer keep his voice in check? Um, like so, you know, if I'm loaded with the cold aye you, know, you can cancel a pub gig you can get your friend to cover it it's aye. not a big deal aye different when it's a wedding does he just try and keep himself he drinks hundreds of water yep. loads of tea honey um, lemon aye all takes that sort of stuff. remedy as soon as away he's very very protective over his profession does he do like does he do 
But vocal exercises to warm up. And Aye. Um, yep. He, he knows when he needs to. Yep. He knows when he, when, he, when he doesn't need to because... If he, see, see if he's feeling... Because well, we all get ill. Aye. If he's feeling a, I feel like I've got a bit of a cold coming Aye. on. Is that a panic? A couple of times he's... he's oh, so over the last... Or can other guys who sign help to the point it gives... It we, allows him to have a wee bit of a break just to kind of keep going. If it gets to that at a gig... Mm-hmm. That we we need to pull together on it and 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 do more yep. individually to let them rest and then maybe even maybe even bring the key down yeah save the tone or whatever um, anything like that if it's if it's leading up to a gig and he's really really unwell which has only happened twice in the last eight years yep. we've got a a dip can pull that we use. Yeah, a couple of guys that we contact if for really, singing. But it would be extreme. Aye. Oh, aye. Yeah. Um, right. But you, so you play with the guys. These are obviously working as a unit. Absolutely fine. Do you ever think about writing any originals, or is or if there's no time for it? There's, the singer does that. He spends. Uh, he's he's go back into doing that again. His own stuff. Is this purely for fun? Aye. Well, I, probably aye. I don't, he's not taking any anything serious. A good friend of mine um, who's kind of trying to do a wee break through. The new as a solo artist. Mm-hmm. Um, we did, <coughs> we did a uh, a lot of rehearsal and recording with him um, to help him get his songs, pretty much prepared for an album. Yeah, and that was fun as well because we were doing stuff. It was it was just writing songs. Yeah, he had written the song, the lyrics, and the melody, so and what, what have you. But what kind of what style? Would, if he's writing an original song. What, what it, would it come out sounding like? It was quite a it was quite a bizarre mix. Because it is because strange when you, when you play, you, you know what you like. I. But you get so used to playing all these different styles. It was. It, it's a, you cut. It can sometimes coming out. I, come out sounding a little. Yeah. Strange, but in a good way. Well, Tom, your bass player, he's he's very much a kind of metal guy. Yep. Matt, the guitarist, is. Unbelievably talented, like jazz and classical stuff. Right, okay. And I'm your kind of mainstream pop '80s pop band so it's drummer. A, it's a strange. So throwing all that together, oh, it was. But it, could it, it came out quite nice. Really although, it, although it came out really well, and he was, we were all happy. It wasn't what the record company wanted. Right. So things got changed, and things got simplified, and then can you play less notes? Can you do that? And it all just got all reined back in. Yeah. That's because that's what they wanted to see. It wasn't what he wanted to do or mm-hmm. what we felt because he asked us go and do the drums and the, the bass and the guitar for me go and play, yep. do what you think play what you think these are all more than capable and the stuff sounded great in our ears yeah. but it wasn't what the record company wanted so the songs did a, a, he's just about to release an album the songs are coming out nothing like what they were nothing at all like what they were when we done them aye yeah. um, but I, that's just it I'd see in your uh, sneaky treacle won an award. Your Scottish Wedding Awards. And it was Rabsy Nesbitt's It was, it was lovely Elaine, wife. It was Elaine C. Smith, that, um, who's brilliant. That, that handed that across to Aye, you. Aye, she's so cool. We've, uh, that, that award, well, it used to be known as The Vows. Yeah. So we, 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 we played it at one year, and then we were nominated the next, or the same year actually, yep. and then we, then we won it, and it, she did that one as well. She presented yeah. that. So then it, then it was off through COVID and what yeah, have yeah. you. Um, and then we were nominated for last year's. So me and, it was only me and Craig that I'd went. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we went. And it was funny because when we walked up onto the stage, she gave us an award and as we were walking away, you can actually hear her in all the videos. She's like, see you next year, boys. Uh, <laughs> what's funny is my, my sister was working with her. All right. So the next day, Elaine was like, oh, my am absolutely knackered. I think that's the worst thing. I was like, Remember that guy you were speaking to in the aye, pub? Aye, she aye. gave him an award. Aye, because she was apparently her agent had said to her not to do the, the wedding awards. Mm-hmm. Um, but she and I know she loves it because she just loves the whole wedding industry thing. Yeah. It's a brilliant night. It's yeah. such a good good night. Um, so she was she was quite. I can't I can't remember what she was going into record or to to rehearse. It was a it was the King's Theatre. The, the uh, pan. Oh, that's pan. right. My that's right. The choreographer would be there. So yeah. aye. So she was very, like, sort of low key. Yeah, there wasn't yeah. much excitement, and they outbursts with her voice. Yeah. Um, but it's, oh, she was brand new. Like, she's brilliant. So, what advice would you give to like somebody like Barry Frame, who 
has not won any awards. He's not won any. <laughs> and he also plays in Denny's second best wedding band. Um, we we get asked a lot for a lot of bands. We thought that because we we're popular. I wonder, it's not by luck, but it's because we put hard work in. Oh, but we never knock anybody. Yeah. Like we just we we we've got to be we are just be being us. Mm -hmm. And if people want to nominate us for awards and we win them or not, yeah. it, it, we're not forcing that on anybody. It's yeah. just we've, we've got ourselves to a nice comfortable position and we're but busy. But it's nice to be recognised because you've put in a lot aye. of hard work. Aye, aye. And you're not just getting handy that no. you're getting it because you deserve it. Well, the Confetti Awards were last night and we got a highly recommended at that as well. We didn't win it, mm -hmm. but to get highly recommended, which is what they call second place, yeah. To win the Your Scottish Wedding well, you, Awards, you must be doing some right if you're getting mentioned in all these circles. These are these are all customer um, related awards. Yeah. How did you go out your way for a customer? Do you do stuff for charity, which we do? Do you this? Do you that? How would you deal if something? I mean, during the winter, like last year, when we had these really heavy snows. Yeah. We were lucky enough to have a van that we could pretty much take us anywhere, and we were we were all capable of or in a nice position to get a phone call mm -hmm. at two or three in the afternoon on a Saturday yep. to say, look, I know you on the gigging. This band's had to cancel because the van's stuck He's in the stock and you do it. Yeah. We were doing it. And, and, and that, that was, we yeah. were only doing it to be the big guns. We were just, I oh, we, we want to get out blue. We love doing this. Of course. So, I so, and, and, and that's what's, I think as long as you, you're respectful of everybody in the room when you get there, when you're at your gig. And we've spoke about people that can sometimes just rattle you a bit mm -hmm. at gigs. Just... You get that in life. It's your, uh, aye. You get yeah. one at Tesco or yeah, Asda or whatever. Um, and also be as nice as you can to the client because yeah. they're paying the bill. They're your, they're your gaffer for the day. Yeah. Last question. Mm -hmm. Ask the same question to each person. It's great because I get a different answer right. every time. For yourself, Mount Rushmore, who is your four musicians or bands the four that you just put up there as being, I love these, these are great, whether it be performing, songwriting, just uh -huh. the songs they come out with, who are your four that you have up there? Um, definitely, oh, Mike and Mechanics. Okay. I love every bit of what they do, especially more recently because Andrew Rochford, who was the singer in Rochford, mm -hmm. joined them. Okay. And I went to see them live last year and it was Phil Collins' son Nick that was playing the drums right, Okay. So it was so good. Yeah. Apart from the fact I like their music, I like the way they write stuff. Um, drummer wise, I have no idea. I, I have never no. ever been able to like hundred percent. Never ever been able to sit and go. He's a guy. He's a guy that I really like. I, I know Ian Matthews for Kasabian, and Ian is. We had a discussion one night about the two as just being dad drummers. Yeah. We both we both just play the drums and make money and get our kids stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's a different scale because you're like, I'm Kasabian and you're going to yes. the world and I'm going to be playing in Bonnie Bridge Golf Club tomorrow night. It's, right. like, it's, it's the same thing. You're still committing to it. Still... <laughs> and when he plays, he's a groover and that's what I like. Mm -hmm. he, he, he plays straight through all the songs. Solid groove. Um, I really like that. I, I never ever get too fussed with guys that play um, 20 minute drum solos. Mm -hmm. For being a drummer. It sends me to sleep. Yeah. So That's Phil, not, it's not for everyone. No, Phil Collins uh, as a drummer is or used to be um, is definitely up there with one of the greatest drummer come songwriters. Mm -hmm. um, he's not got the greatest voice, but it's the same. It's like the the whole Ringo Starr yeah. the Beatles thing. If it wasn't a, if it wasn't Phil Collins singing the songs that he's made popular. They wouldn't be the same. Mm. Um, Ringo, Ringo Starr, definitely, definitely. Like I said, when, when I had to, when mm. I had to learn these songs, I had, that's that's the point that I sort of took a, a backward step and went, "Jeez." Mm. I mean, I'm I'm not a Beatles fan. I like some of their songs, but I, I'm not a fan of the Beatles. I, I still think they're probably the most important band. Oh, I. To exist. I. With what they've done for music. Yep. Because everything there was music before the Beatles and then everything after. Aye. There was a drummer, um, his name's Andy Gangadine, mm -hmm. who played with the Spice Girls. Right. Okay. And Massive Attack. 
he was he was a drummer that I definitely listened to when I was transitioning from being a kid on a drum kit playing try to learn like shuffling stuff and Ringo Starr stuff and, and Metallica and whatever else he was that drummer that came in that had a basic acoustic set up with electronic pads who was taken like sort of a no a real drummer can play dance music yeah yeah so I really liked watching his stuff and watching him playing his style of play mm-hmm. and it was that, that introduced me to triggers and just kind of different things like that yeah. with the fact that you can play a four piece drum kit yeah. with some triggers and sound massive so that, that I think that definitely took me down through the sort of dance um, music side yep. of things. Just that mainstream, just solid, solid, solid drumming. Stuart, thank you for coming along. Not a ball, of pleasure. Um, any advice? I'll get it afterwards. I'll say it to Barry. Aye, he needs it. He's needing loads. <laughs> I'll write a big list for you. <laughs> and, uh, thank you very much for Not coming along. Not a problem. Along. Not a problem. Cheers,